I guarantee you that this is the most in-depth video that you can find on YouTube comparing EGFR slash creatinine testing versus cystatin C testing and whether or not your kidneys are healthy or not. In this video, I will be covering all of the downsides of one of these tests, all the issues I experienced because I ran one of these tests, why I completely disregard it as a valid test from now on, why the other test is superior and all of its benefits in terms of accuracy, and last but not least, I will explain how to translate the results from one test into the other. The creatinine test that almost everyone uses in order to determine the health of their kidneys is only about 40% accurate under normal conditions. In the case of individuals with higher levels of muscle mass or individuals with lower levels of muscle mass due to muscle wasting disorders or being an amputee or whatnot, the inaccuracy of this test drops considerably. However, in case of obesity, the accuracy of this creatinine test also considerably drops. For people that are on a high protein diet, which is usually the case for people that have higher levels of muscle mass, the accuracy of this test becomes less favorable again. Many people who perform the creatinine test end up worrying about their kidneys. I am one of these people. I went for multiple kidney tests and all of them came back slightly over 60. EGFR. Having a GFR of 60, which stands for glomerular filtration rate, which is very hard to say, so I'm just going to stick to GFR or EGFR from now on, is the line in the sand between having chronic kidney disease and having slightly reduced but still healthy kidney function. So back in 2019, when I performed the creatinine test and got a result of 68 EGFR, I started worrying quite a bit. Especially when seven months later, my results showed 63. What? I'll show you my results on my blood testing sheet so you can follow along and kind of understand what I went through. When I got these results and I saw them dropping, I started worrying that I was going to end up with chronic kidney disease. Because wherever I looked on the internet, they said that if you're under 60 for more than three months, you will not be able to get back over 60 anymore and you will be battling chronic kidney disease for the rest of your life. Oh, hey! Being as much into health as I am, I started doing all sorts of research, all sorts of tests, and I made big changes in my life in terms of diet, lifestyle, and whatnot. No matter what I changed in my diet or lifestyle, my results would never really go up a lot. And this made me feel like I was constantly walking on my toes, trying not to tip the scale into having chronic kidney disease for the rest of my life. Having done multiple urine tests and never finding anything in my urine that would indicate that my kidneys were having a hard time, I was very surprised. I also had a bunch of doctors giving me very bad advice, such as you should cut out your creatine, you shouldn't eat so much protein, no red meat for you, you should switch your animal-based protein for plant-based protein. None of this was true. And this is actually something that is being told by doctors a lot. In the case of your kidneys actually suffering or having chronic kidney disease, there should also be a number of different symptoms showing, such as albumin in your urine, high blood pressure, loss of appetite, excessive urination. And when I say excessive urination, I don't mean the amount of urine that you get, but the amount of times that you feel the need to go to the toilet. Fatigue, insomnia. In the case of actually being very deep into chronic kidney disease, you can even get shaking or tremor all the time. Memory loss, foamy urine. Foamy urine indicates that you have albumin in your urine, by the way. Nausea, vomiting, or having a bad breath that smells like ammonia. Some of these symptoms are very light and they show up very early. Some of them are very severe and show up in later stages of chronic kidney disease. I have none of these symptoms and I was living a very healthy life. Nice. And even my blood work looked pretty much perfect other than having low HDL because I'm living a mostly indoor life. Let me tell you a few more things that decrease the accuracy of this test just to show you how bad the accuracy of this test really is for many people out there. If you take creatine monohydrate, a few days or up to a week before the test. This can lower the accuracy of the test. Eating any kind of red meat can also lower the accuracy of the test. Eating a high protein diet can lower the accuracy of the test. Like I said before, many doctors told me that I had to cut out creatine, red meat, and high protein diet. This is not true. They didn't read the papers correctly. If you read the papers correctly, 
then it just tells you that it influences the accuracy of this test, but it doesn't actually negatively influence the function of your kidneys. So what I think happened is that these doctors read these papers incorrectly and then gave this advice to their clients. And then they would see after cutting out creatine monohydrate, red meat and high protein diets, that the EGFR number would go up thinking that it was actually working. However, it only works for the accuracy of this test. So then the results seem better, but nothing is actually improving. If you are slightly dehydrated before taking this test, there you go, the accuracy decreases again. Did you use Tylenol or Ibuprofen in the past few days? There you go, accuracy drops again. At this point in the video, it just gets really comical how bad this test really is and how I've been worrying all these years for no reason whatsoever. It took me all the way to 2022 to learn about the existence of another test. This test is called Cystatin C. Cystatin C is a test with a 93% accuracy and it doesn't deal with all of these flaws that I just mentioned. The Cystatin C test measures your renal function and muscle mass, creatine, diet, hydration, and all of the other things that I just mentioned are not an issue for the accuracy of this test. Doing a Cystatin C test costs quite a bit more money and you do have to make sure that your lab does it in a standardized way. Through a complicated mathematical equation, you can then turn your cystatin C test result into an EGFR result. Now don't worry, you don't need to be a mathematical genius in order to figure out whether your kidneys are working correctly or not. You simply go to the website called kidney.org and you put in your cystatin C value. Have a look at my sheet. So as you can see on the sheet, I put my cystatin C value, I put my age, I'm currently 31, but I, did, I performed this test last year, so I put 30 years old, gender, male, and then it asks if it's done in a standardized way, yes or no. This is very important. I asked the lab and the answer is yes. And then they ask if it's adjusted for body service area. The answer here in my case is no, which means that they will go based off of the standardized formula. As you can see, this gives me a result of 105. And even if I change the age to 31, it will give me a result of 104. And I will be performing another cystatin C test very soon. So there you have it, an EGFR result of 105. Very surprising, given the fact that the creatinine test has been showing me results between 63 and 78, for three years consecutively. This had me worried and changing my diet and my supplementation, my lifestyle, had me doing all sorts of tests such as urine tests and whatnot for no good reason. If you like going to the gym and you have some muscle mass on you, you use creatine, you eat red meat, you use protein, then please reach a little bit deeper into your pocket to get an accurate kidney test. Cystatin C is 93% accurate and you will sleep peacefully at night and not have to go through all of this that I had to go through. I'm trying to save you a lot of time. It can literally save years of worrying for no reason whatsoever. You're welcome. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel and leave behind some suggestions of videos that you would like to see. These deep dives usually take me some time because I really want to make sure that the information that I give you is accurate. However, if your suggestion fits into the category of videos that I like making, I will try to deliver on them. Feel free to share this video and spread the word about my channel because I'm aiming to help as many people as I possibly can through this YouTube channel.